Good morning, you're welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. My name is Rume Paulson. And my name is Nyamgul Agaji. Today we hope to be having a bumper harvest as it is. <laughs> We're going to be talking mostly about the ping pong going on between the NLC and the government of the Federation of Nigeria. And we do hope that our analysts will do justice to whatever is happening. Yeah, we'll be analyzing and talking about the impact, you know, it has on economy, um, on the economy and then the businesses in Nigeria. Mm. We'll also be taking some global stories, making headlines in our national dailies as well as some top trending stories. Now, moving over to our top trending stories. Well, this first one talks about Heritage Bank's license being revoked. Yes, so CBN revokes Heritage Bank license and... Um, you know, the Central Bank of Nigeria has revoked the banking license of Heritage Bank PLC effective immediately. This decision was made due to the bank's failure to improve its financial performance, posing a threat to financial stability. The Apex Bank's acting director of Corporate Com Communication Department, C.D. Ali, disclosed this in a statement on Monday. According to the CBN, the bank's management has been unable to stem the decline despite various supervisory steps taken by the regulator. With no reasonable prospect of recovery, the CBN has taken this action to protect the financial system and maintain public confidence. The Nigerian financial system remains on a solid footing. We are committed to ensuring the safety and soundness of our financial system and this action reflects that commitment, um, the statement added. This move is seen as a significant step by the CBN to maintain the stability of the financial system and protect depositors' funds. The public has been assured that the revocation of Heritage Bank's license will not impact the overall health of the financial system. And that's our first top trending story this morning in fact the news broke yesterday and a lot of people were mm. talking about it saying oh my god a heritage bank is you know being closed by the cbn and i think the the major thing that people spoke about was how will customers get their monies back yeah well the cbn has assured that uh, the customers will get their monies back only that i saw another news uh, item which uh, pegged a particular amount as uh, that which will be returned to the customers if I understood that story mm -hmm. well. So if I'm, uh, I'm banking with Heritage Bank and I have 200 million Naira, I may not be given the whole of 200 million Why? Naira. So, well, maybe I didn't understand it well, mm -hmm. but they have to explain to us. Yeah. I always fear this because my first experience I mean, with you, banking... You, you've said something Yes, like this my before. first experience of, with banking uh, was this kind of a thing. And we were promised that our funds were going to be protected. And when you're talking about funds, you don't have to talk about millions. There are some people who have 50,000 in that and account, life and it means more to them than the person who has a 100 million. So are we all protected, or are you saying there are some that will be more protected than others? So if this has been done, I hope that everybody will be able to get everything that they banked with the Heritage Bank. Yeah. If that happens, then no problem. And then it should be so seamlessly done that you don't have to spend more to get whatever you banked there. Because if you don't have up to, okay, let's say you have 20,000 Naira and you have to spend 25,000 Naira to get 20,000, then it makes no sense. Yeah. So if this is a bull step, let the bull step be taken in all ramifications and make sure the, um, the customers' finances are protected. Yeah, and I think this is the role of the NDIC because when you um, deposit money, you expect that there should be some level of insurance to mm -hmm. that money. Yeah. So if the CBN is revoking a license of any bank, definitely I expect my money back because <laughs> NDIC is supposed to insure my money telling me that. Because, I mean, what's the reason the insurance has a for pick. going that's, to that's the bank? No, but what's the reason for going to the bank? Because I might as well just be able to dig a hole in my house and put my money there. Sure. But most times, when banking first came, the reason why people put them, their monies in banks was because of security. Mm -hmm. Because you don't want a situation whereby you have a lot of cash at home and then, you know, thieves will come, robbers. You, you used to hear of those days when, you know, thieves will come to your house and ask you your money or your life. Mm -hmm. So where's your money? But then when you put it in the bank, because because now since we kind of operate uh well, I call it a cashless, it's not fully cashless, but a cashless <laughs> society, you know that you're putting your money in the bank because of that security. But when I put my money in the bank because of security and I might not get it back, then there's a problem. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think that you know, if the CBN is saying you're gonna get your money back and they're going to peg it to a certain amount, that's just wrong. Because NDIC is supposed to make sure that every penny, even if my money is 
99,991 naira. Mm -hmm. That's 991. I don't care if you're going to give me a The coin. one naira should be part of it. Because it is my money. Mm -hmm. I worked for it. So I don't know what we are going to do to ensure that all of the customers get their monies back. But it is, it is paramount, especially in an economy like this where it's dwindling. If my if that's all my life savings is the is the economy dwindling it or it, it has died? <laughs> well, I, I don't know. They, well, maybe the the experts will say it's dwindling mm -hmm. or it is picking up, whatever their their the terms they like terms to use, will be. Yeah. But I I think as far as I'm concerned, it's dead because um, there's nothing you can't seem to survive in an economy like this. Everybody's looking for ways to cut corners, to do a lot mm -hmm. of things, and that is not good enough for us. So the builders will want to cut corners so that they will make more money. Yeah. Buildings mm -hmm. will collapse more. The drivers will want to cut costs so that they don't maintain their cars. People will die more. Mm -hmm. Accidents, every, yeah. every Every aspect of our lives, if we cut corners, we'll die more. Uh, people say uh, when you take the shortcut, the shortcut brings out uh, blood from your nose mm. because it's always really, really bad sh cutting, um, cutting some corners to yeah. make sure you make ends meet. But this is where we are. Our economy, according to yourself, is dwindling. <laughs> For me, who I'm not an expert, I'm mm. not the kind of businessman like you, you are. Feel like there's no so economy it's, itself. It, you know, day. He needs to be. You know, day. No day. <laughs> That's what I'll say. But well, Heritage Bank has been, um, uh, whatever has been done to it by CBN, we hope, like we're saying, that the money will be protected but, but and everybody so gets So before it. a bank gets to this point, aren't there like, you know, experts or analysts that, you know, come and tell you you're not performing well? They said they have done that. <sighs> They've done that. So I, I don't know. I don't know the yardstick for performance yeah. and all that, but they said they have done that. Let's mm -hmm. take their word for it. But my concern is, even if they are closing all the banks in Nigeria, let all the monies inside those banks mm -hmm. be safe. Guess, yeah. And let the customers get, get their, their money. Because we know the situation whereby you're hearing, oh, sorry, your money has gone into voicemail. Voice, voicemail where? <laughs> <laughs> because it's <laughs> better for a bank to be bought over by a bigger bank. Exactly. That one, you, you know that you can always get your money. It's just, there's just going it's to just be like a, a transition yes. from one to another. Yeah. And, you know, we've seen banks like that happen. We've seen things like that happen with mm -hmm. banks in Nigeria where a bigger bank just comes and, you know, buy. And, and I'm like, why did they not just sell out before getting to this point of, because in a way it's liquidation. So why did they not? Because okay, now all of the structures. What's going to happen? Is someone else going to come and buy it and change? I'm just wondering what's going to happen with with it because they cannot operate in Nigeria. But all of the assets that they have, what happens to that? Churches are looking for accommodation. Wow. <laughs> okay. I did not expect that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, let's move to the next one. Human rights lawyer and senior advocate of Nigeria. Femi Falano has called on the National Assembly to swiftly approve a law to establish a revised minimum wage that aligns with the current economic situation in the country, similar to how they recently did for the national anthem. According to him, the National Minimum Wage Act 2019 had expired, making it crucial for the government at all levels to review and pass a new law to that effect. Pursuant to the National Minimum Wage Act 2019, the national minimum wage was fixed at 30,000 Naira. By virtue of Section 3, Subsection 4 of the Act 2019, the national minimum wage expires after five years, and it shall be reviewed in line with the provisions of this Act. Since the commencement date of the Act was the 18th day of April 2019, the national minimum wage of 30,000 Naira has expired. He added that the federal government had announced an additional 35,000 Naira wage award, uh, which is wage subsidy, for six months following the removal of the fuel subsidy starting from 1st of September 2023. However, the federal government turned around to offer a minimum wage of 48,000 Naira, which led to the commencement of an indefinite strike by the Nigeria Labor Congress and Trade Union Congress due to the failure of government and other employers of labor to pay a realistic new minimum wage to Nigerian workers. The Nig National Assembly should therefore uh, speedily, according to uh, Falano, pass a new National Minimum Wage Act like the new National Anthem Act that was enacted within 48 hours last week. That's what Falano is saying. Mm. Minimum wage. Uh, since the inception of this administration, there was a... a a committee that was set up to look into the minimum wage mm -hmm. and one year after we're still like i said earlier playing ping pong mm. with nlc i don't know what you think 
Well, for me, I feel like we've really dallied for too long. Let's just reach an agreement and move on. There's just because it, th this minimum wage expired in April, mm -hmm. May, June. This is two months, and we're still talking about this. And in fact, we started talking about it since last year, mm -hmm. if we're being honest. So, some ex experts, let's use that <laughs> word, would say, you know what? Nigeria, don't, we don't have that money to pay people. Mm -hmm. We don't have that money to pay workers, especially when they started with about a million naira and then 615, and now it stands at 494,000 naira. And they're like, if we were paying 30,000 naira and some states were not even able to, you know, afford that for their workers, what do you think is going to happen when they say 494,000 naira? Obviously, people will not get paid. They will stay months because we can as well just agree and sign it and say, oh, yes, this is the new minimum wage. But do we have the capacity to pay for it? Not necessarily. We do not. But still, having to say you're going to just bring about 48,000 naira and then 54,000 naira is quite like a slap in the face because you know, you know fully well, if you're realistic, if you, if you are in Nigeria, you know that cannot afford anything barely anything at the moment even having like i'm not even going to say three square meal even if it's one meal a day you cannot feed your family on fifty four thousand naira. well they came and they said sixty thousand naira as of today because they had a meeting yesterday and they said they've agreed it's going to be over sixty thousand naira. now i don't know what that means I don't know if I was having a conversation with with the director earlier this morning, and I said so it could be sixty one thousand naira, and then it goes it could be sixty thousand five hundred because when they say over sixty thousand naira, there is no exact figure, mm -hmm. and then we don't even know if maybe okay it's a hundred or it's two hundred or something. But I feel like at the end of the day, you need to be realistic with yourself, especially with the economy that we are in now, and say what is okay. We might not be able to pay you know, as high as 494,000 naira, but something that is substantial enough because it is a living wage. You want people to have a good standard of living. That is just it. And I know that that's what the NLC and TUC are fighting for, <coughs> as well as the organized private sector, which I'm not sure if that's going to reflect there. But for the civil servants, the government workers, um, this is for them. And we just hope that they finally reach a good agreement both the NLC and TUC and the federal government, they reach an agreement that is okay for everyone. And I hope it also affects me as but well. But there, 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 there are things on the, in public glare uh, where you, a lot of people will argue with what you said, whether we can foot that bill or not. Yeah. A country that says they, are, that they don't have money will be sponsoring Hajj or Christian pilgrims to the tune of 90 billion naira. Mm -hmm. A country that has no money will be sponsoring SUVs uh, of 162 160. billion or so, 160 million, million yeah. naira. We or have no a money. Bloated cabinet. Yes. So we don't have money and we're doing all this. A country that has no money is constructing a new road that will cost more than the longest road in Africa, which is from Cairo to South Africa. It costs this this our road here from Lagos to Calabar costs like at least three times what that road costs mm. in dollars when you when you're talking. So we're we're not just talking naira. naira. So a road can come from uh, Cairo to South Africa and cost less than a road that is within Nigeria. Within and you're telling states. us that you don't have money. So these are things that when you look at them, you will you will be asking yourself, do we really don't not have money, or is it that priorities are just set in a way that um, will not help us in any way. Mm. We are misplacing our priorities. How much does a National Assembly member earn? earn right. In public glare, I don't know how that is, but um, they are, they are, the figures they are giving us are almost like 30 million naira monthly for a, and then you don't even know what so, the benefits that So which means this. every, every um, senator can pay 30 people if they're paying a million naira mm. just from his salary every if they're paying five hundred thousand you can pay up to 60, 60 people yeah. in one month so why not place the national assembly members on minimum wage as well let's see working mm. but you're not placing them you're uh, making them earn millions of naira mm. and the workers that are working more than you mm -hmm. are earning thirty thousand sixty thousand i see maybe a, a, a time where, or <clears throat> a situation where the, the government will now say, okay, let's place it at 70,000 or 71,000 so that they will ex exceed what a do is already doing because mm. it would be a shame for one state to do more than more the federal than government. The federal so government. Exactly. I see that. But 
the fundamental question is that why are they leaving aside the reasons why we are in this situation in the first place? Mm -hmm. Because NLC will not rise to 1 million or 500,000 mm -hmm. if things were fine. Yeah. So why are things the way they are? Mm -hmm. Is it because of fuel subsidy removal? Well, what can be done? It. Is it because mm -hmm. of the dollar? What can be done? Mm -hmm. Previous administrations did uh, some things like that and uh, the, uh, the economy was a bit stable. See now, people who are doing diapers, for instance, are running away. People who are, who are producing medicine are running away. Manufacturing people, companies, people, companies, manufacturing companies are folding up. So our economy is getting worse and worse. So even at a million naira, things will get worse. Exactly. And if the th fundamental things are not addressed, yes. whether they give NLC 1 million naira, things will even get worse. Yeah, because even then, you think you have more spending power, but everything will just skyrocket because now people feel like you have the money, spend mm -hmm. the money. It's just a ripple effect to everything. And then, I mean, I was having a conversation yesterday talking about the minimum wage. I think five years. It's too long for us to discuss what the minimum wage should be. I feel like year on year basis, it's just like how we have, um, you know, analysts say this is our borrowings for this year. Mm -hmm. So th next year we have to borrow more because we need more money to have some projects or develop certain things. That is the same way we need to look at the minimum wage. You need to look at it with inflation because if we wait for five years, it's going to be a huge chunk that would seem ridiculous and you're like we cannot afford this but if it's okay maybe inflation goes up by two percent okay definitely minimum wage should go up by two percent that way i'm not an expert right i mean analysts might some analysts will come and say oh that's not the way it's being done but in my layman's understanding that is what i would expect except someone has to that's come why i'm working so that i can enter the market and buy things it, yes. so if i cannot so buy what if, is if, it, if i cannot the afford it then there's a problem so if for instance i know that okay as inflation is in, you know is rising my income would also increase with that then it's it's a gradual pr progression but if we're waiting and saying five years come on you know what the dollar was to the naira five years ago is not what it is today but if it's year on year if it's on a year on year basis it's easier nlc and tuc can even fight better and the government can understand better because then it would just be like okay we're moving from thirty five thousand from thirty thousand to fifty four thousand but when you now say from thirty thousand to five hundred and something it's ridiculous honestly and if, in a way it might seem unrealistic but, but the government is moving from 30,000 to 500,000 in their own taxation. That is the well, problem. There's that that's, that's, that's so, the problem. So that's, I feel like a gradual progression is just the best way to go. After this, I mean, this is one fight that the NLC and TUC, they are fighting now. We don't know what the turnout is. They've said over 60,000 hours. We don't know what the agreement is going to be when they finally, you know, let the cat out of the bag on the exact figure. But I feel like they need to start to look for a better a more sustainable way to talk about the minimum wage. Five years is too long. Well, why not government just says for every civil servant, if you have your ID card, you can travel for free, for instance. I'm, I'm, not, saying, <laughs> I'm not saying it has to be that way. But, you know, <laughs> these are things that give the workers concern. I am in Lagos. I come from Cross River State. It's like 12 hours at least away from here. Mm. So if I'm trying to save to travel to Cross River State for a state that... I flew uh, for 25,000 three years ago, just three years ago. Yeah, and now you're talking about 200,000 or so. About 300,000. Okay, so, so which means I'll have to save like for one year before I can go see my siblings or anybody at home, mm. which is wrong. An African is, is territorial. You, you love the place you come from. So mm -hmm. we always want to go back to exactly. our roots. But in a situation where you can't go back, you can't send money back to your people. Because you don't have enough money you to You don't even have enough money. So <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Yourself. Now, if you go to a lot of ministries, they are not having promotion still now. Some yeah. have, not, have not had employment for a long time. But, you know, it's constitutional that year after year, you progress from one salary level, scale yeah. to the, the other and all that, even if it's a small sum. Yeah, if level but 12, These things level are not 13, being added. Like Promotions that. are not being given. Nothing. And then National Assembly members are earning hardship allowance. Hardship for doing what? I mean, we're all facing the They're even earning together. newspaper allowance. How many mm -hmm. of them read, read newspapers? The newspapers? Some of them get subscription for free from these uh, um, yeah, uh, network providers. Yeah. And then they earn an allowance for that. They earn an allowance for, for what they wear. They earn an allowance for repair of cars that they change every three years. The and word is just misplaced priority. So, 
exactly that's just the word it's it's because i mean we're not really looking at how to help people and i think it needs to come from a place of humanity because if you are saying i mean we have a new national anthem right now that talks about tribes and tongues and brotherhood and it's supposed to be about love right if you really love your nation if you're as patriotic as you claim to be you definitely want the good you know the good life for everyone in your nation and so you're not going to be thinking i know humans were naturally selfish we want things for ourselves but it should go beyond that because you you should understand that all of these things you are enjoying is just a place of privilege the only reason why you are there was because you had the privilege to be able to get there but how about other people how about the constituents how about the people back home how about the women in the village or the little boys 95 percent of them have not been to their villages for the last one year get there and then you forget you you go to that place because you are now in a place of power and authority and then you forget that there are people who are leaving in nigeria who have not been able to see power they've not seen lights they've not seen money to even buy gas they've not seen money to feed they pro it's 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 disheartening and i think we need to start to have that humanity again whereby we think of each other and if you're going there and you're in power you shouldn't just think about yourself why are you stealing 80 billion what are you going to use it for how like how much how much can you spend do you know what it is to ball like like you know the genesis will mm -hmm. say to go out and ball with like a hundred millionaire for like two months it's a lot of enjoyment so when you're thinking of someone stealing about 80 billion you're like what do you want to use that money for it's wickedness you want to keep it for your generation it is which means you, you already know paid. that your generation is daft uh, sorry uh, uh, forgive the word but if you know they can make money of their own you don't have to steal to keep so, for them. Much. so now you're just made, telling us that maybe it's a they're not creative alleviation scheme for you to want to steal so much, it's a poverty alleviation scheme because you're poor. And yeah. so you're thinking, I might not be able to get this again. Let me try and siphon everything for myself. But that's not how it should be. Nigeria should be for everyone. The resources that we have is for everybody. It's not just for a select few. So if you're there, you know, think about the other people. If you're saying, oh, you know what, I want a 160 million Naira SUV, not everybody likes the good life, let's be honest. Nobody's saying don't want that. But even if you want that, you should still think of the constituents back home. That this one million, 160 million Naira SUV I'm asking for, how many lives can it help in my constituency? The thing and is, when you think of that, you would now know that there are some priorities that you have that are misplaced. And so you start to change them. The thing is, it's doable. So let me just use this time and give a shout out to some people who are really actually doing what you're saying. I give an example. I may not say that that is the perfect example, but there's some <clears throat> someone who said, if his people allow him go to the uh, primaries that we're having, whatever money he gets from there, he's going to share to the constituents. And they let him go. It happened last year. They let him go. Did and they gave the him money? dollars, a lot of dollars. He came to his constituency and shared the entire money That's to amazing. the people. People are still doing it. And he didn't die. It wasn't That's like, so he didn't die. <laughs> and oh even though goodness. you will still have haters, there's nothing you can do and not have haters. Jesus was crucified, mm -hmm. you know. But there are a lot of people who, whether it's passing up there or down here, they will pray against it for him. Mm. That, you know, God bless you. That is how it is. Now, if you're leaving, what are you leaving behind? It's your name. What name are you leaving behind? Well, we should be asking ourselves. A lot of people in the National Assembly, you can bet me, have not been to their villages for at least the last one year. Yeah. I'm not even talking about constituency. They are villages where they come where from. They, <laughs> they, they have not been there. And they will go back to their constituencies. A lot of them will go back there after three years so that they will go and do empowerment and mm. give the unnecessary things it's to the just, people who are there just and just campaigning uh, campaigning it's well all right I, enough about that let's <laughs> just move over to the final um top trending story this one says one billionaire um business business is loan at nine percent interest rate and that is being said by the finance minister wali edu the minister of finance and coordinating minister of the economy wali edu says the federal government is offering businesses including manufacturers in the country credit facilities 
up to 1 billion naira at a 9% interest rate. He said small scale business entrepreneurs can get up to 1 million naira in credit facility, while larger businesses can access up to 1 billion naira at 9% interest rate, which is cheaper than the current interest rate of 26.25 recommended by national banks to the CBN. Um, Adrian said the emphasis is on ramping up food production, the emphasis is on dealing with food nutrition and food security insecurity. Likewise, the emphasis is on helping small-scale businesses through grants and nano enterprises through grant funding. He assured Nigerians that food prices will come down in the coming months. <laughs> well, <laughs> the minister said, though food insecurity is a worldwide phenomenon, um, the government has dedicated special funding for infrastructure to boost agricultural output. Why did you laugh? Because you paused. <laughs> <laughs> you knew the effect of what you, we were saying. You paused well, and like I was food, laughing. Food, food, food prices will come down soon. Even though I always say it on this, on this table, Gravity does not happen in Nigeria, especially when it comes to prices. So, like when things go up, I've, I mean, someone should come out and, you know, say I'm wrong. It's, I mean, it's a laughable prove thing. me wrong and tell me that things have gone up and then they've come down. It's a laughable thing because the uh, CBN is a, an institution of the federal government, no matter how they say it's uh, autonomous and all that, but it's an institution of the government. They're pegging their lending rate at um, profit. Oh, yeah, uh, the interest rate at 26 mm. point, point something. And then the same federal government is offering 9 point <laughs> something. And what am I taking 1 million naira for? 1 billion. If, no, like small okay, scale okay, businesses yeah, are yeah. taking up to at least 1 million. What am I taking it for? Half of that money will go for par. Another mm. one will go for less than what I even need. Mm. For, if I'm doing, making a farm, for instance, uh, and I'm taking half for power, another half for transportation. I've not even bought the farm inputs. I've not mm. bought any. I've not paid for labor or anything. So the one million naira will will finish. Then when I do plant the farm, I harvest everything and pay back to government. It doesn't make any like sense. Money it doesn't for make you. any sense. Yeah. So if the dollar is still rising, all the farm inputs will be up. All the machinery, which are not even available, will mm -hmm. be up, and everything that you need to use in the farm will be up. Mm. So the one million will make no sense. There's no significance. And then you're telling me that the food prices will come down. They will not come down in the coming months, except mm. the coming months are like the one that say Jesus will come again. So this administration will Yango. finish. <laughs> <laughs> Democracy will finish. Nigeria will finish. Yango. Because <laughs> they might, they might, after the national anthem, they might say we should go back to, you know, using... Um, I don't know, maybe loin cloths because <laughs> because that's what we used to use and uh, using wheelbarrows, whatever. For me, I, I think I think a double digit interest rate is just we don't. It's need crazy. That. Yeah, it's crazy. A double digit, why? So if they're pegging it at nine percent, that is amazing. But I'm like, why now? Like now that you know the naira has really you know crashed. So even if I want to really get that, I'm not going to. I'm not really going to see a significant, um, you know, impact in whatever I'm doing. So. I mean, it's a good initiative if they're doing that now. A little too late, if you ask me. But, I mean, let's just see what happens. All right, that's it for our top trending stories. We'll go on a short break. We'll look at the weather. And when we return, we'll be reviewing the papers. Please stay with us.